Hello, I'm Charlotte Pike. I'm a cookery writer, teacher and chef. And today I'm going to show you how to make a lentil and vegetable soup. Now this is a really, really simple vegetable soup to make. It uses simple store covered ingredients. And to finish off, you can even add any leftover cooked vegetables you may have to supplement the soup and to use up any leftovers you might have hanging around looking for a use. So I'm going to start the soup making a simple base. And this simple base is called a sofrito, which is uh, used as a core foundation of uh, Italian cooking, essentially. And it will contain onion, garlic, carrot, and celery. And I've also got a red chili here as well, which can be added for a little bit of heat if you like it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to chop up the vegetables and then I'm going to cook them down in some olive oil. And let me show you how. So I've got an onion here and you can add a brown onion like this or indeed a red onion if you have one. So I'm going to cut the onion in half. First of all, I have a plate here for the little bits and pieces and I'm going to take the skin off. Peel off the skin and there's many layers as you need to remove. Peel back like so. And repeat the other half. And I don't think I need to peel any more than the skin off this onion, but every onion is different. I'll take off the top and discard that because that's a bit dry and I don't want to be eating that. And then I've got two halves, so I'm just going to cut in across the top. But of course, feel free to cut the onion however you feel most comfortable. And in fact, you can absolutely use diced onion if you're not able to chop it very easily. So whatever works best for you. So in, across the top. Just make sure your cuts are at even intervals in every direction. Last bit down to the root, and there we have it. Now, with this soup, the idea is that it is a really nice soup to make that doesn't need blending. So, we'll cut the vegetables and we'll serve it as it is. As with any soup, you can either do that or you can blend it as you prefer. And if you don't blend it, you'll end up with small pieces of vegetables in, in a liquid. Um, which is absolutely fine and useful if you don't have a blender to hand. So I'm going to take a large saucepan and I recommend for a soup you take the largest one you have to allow you uh, allow yourself enough space and I'm going to add some olive oil here. So about two tablespoons is probably about right. I'm using extra virgin olive oil but any olive oil you have will be fine. Uh, I'm going to transfer the onion to the pan now. I'll stick the pan over a medium heat to get that going and I'll start off by seasoning with a bit of salt. I'm using sea, sea salt here but any salt you have is fine and I'm going to add some black pepper because I like the flavour but you, again you don't have to. I'll give that a stir and start that warming up. Next I'm going to prepare the garlic. So I've got two cloves of garlic here. I'm going to crush them using my knife and peel them. I'm going to roughly chop them using a knife, but if you've got a garlic crusher and would rather use that, then that's fine. And some garlic um, presses, garlic crushers, um, will actually work without you needing to peel the garlic first. So that's um, potentially an option. So I always cut off the little brown base of the garlic clove because that's really um, tough and I don't want to be eating that. And I'm going to cut it into little slices. And I'm using a chef's knife or a chopping knife here, which is big and um, it is, you know, the, the appropriate tool for the job, so to speak. But if you're not comfortable using this kind of knife, just use whatever kind of knife you've got and 
whichever knife you feel most comfortable using. Um, I am a trained chef, so I I know how to do this, but I appreciate that not everyone does. So don't feel as though you've got to do this, whatever works for you. And of course, you can use um, pre-crushed garlic if that's what you've got to hand and if that's what's easiest for you. So you can be flexible here. So the garlic can go in the pan with the onions. And again, I'll give this a little stir. I'm going to add some celery as well, which is a great sort of foundation um, ingredient to so many soups, stews and sauces in Italy. So I'm going to cut the stick in half length ways. Um, and I'll cut it into half again. And you know what? I'll cut it again into little sticks. And again, this isn't too prescriptive. This is just, this will give you a nice even presentation, which matters a little bit more if the soup isn't going to be blended. But again, I'm just sort of trying to get it as good as I can, but you can just cut it into little slices if that's easier for you. So let's just finish off with these little bits here. There we are, little small, even pieces of celery here. Again, into the pan. So you'll find the sofrito is used as a base um, all sorts of sauces, soups and stews in, in Italian food and indeed in lots of countries around, that world, around the world. And that vegetable base gives flavour and texture to the dish you're making. It's particularly nice in soup. And of course, if you're making this for children who might not find it as appealing to try, if they can see the vegetables in there, then blend it. Stick it in a blender and I'll never know it's a... I'll just finish chopping the celery. I can really start to smell the onion now. It's smelling delicious. I'll give that a quick stir. You can see the objective here is for the onion not to colour. You want it to be fragrant and sweet but not browned, otherwise you'll end up most often with a sort of burn flavour that you really can't take out of the finished soup. And that applies to most things you'll cook, so that's a good tip for you. In goes the celery, and a little stir, and the stir will just ensure that it's all coated nicely in olive oil and seasoning. Next, the carrot, I'm going to cut that in half lengthways. I peeled it first, as you may be able to see. I'm going to cut it into little strips. And again, don't worry about following what I'm doing exactly. If you've got a better way or a way that is easier for you to achieve, then don't worry too much. This will just cut the carrot into small pieces and I always want to aim for the carrot pieces to be roughly the same size as the celery just so that it looks neater. Into the pan and again another stir. Now if you haven't added enough oil and the vegetables in the pan look a bit dry then you can add another little glug. And actually olive oil is one of the main flavourings for this soup and will make it taste particularly delicious. If you want to add a little bit of chilli, you can cut a few slices off the end of a chilli. Make sure you know how hot the chilli is, if possible, before you start. So this is a fat sort of Dutch chilli. These are the sort of most commonly found chilies if you shop in a supermarket. Um, and they are comparatively mild. So um, if you eat chili, a lot of people will be quite happy to have a slice or two of this on its own, maybe on top of a salad or pizza or something. Um, but the finer, smaller, thinner chilies tend to be a lot hotter. And um, if, you're, if you find yourself with one of those to cook with, and 
you're not confident at knowing what type of chilli you're cooking with, or you maybe prefer less heat from the food than just add a tiny bit, maybe even taste it first, but exercise caution unless you know exactly what kind of chilli you're going to be using because you could end up ruining the whole dish because it's so hot. So the chilli is of course optional, it's quite nice to have a bit of heat, um, adds another dimension of flavour, but entirely personal preference. And in fact some people who might be making this for all the family may find that you know want to avoid it altogether. But of course if you want to introduce a bit of spice at the table then you can of course serve chilli on the table to go onto the soup. So it's quite a nice way of serving dishes family style to have the soup, um, you know, the main dish and the accompaniments on the side to add a little burst of flavour. So let's just stir that together. I'm going to add a litre of vegetable stock here. Now vegetable stock because this is a vegetarian dish. But of course if you eat meat and you have it available then by all means use chicken stock. And a can of lentils. This is just a can of brown lentils. So you want to use about 250 to 300 grams of lentils. You can put something like red lentils or green lentils washed in uncooked or you can add a can of lentils for a really quick and easy option. So I'm using a can here because they're very inexpensive and widely found and they're quite an easy thing to keep in the cupboard. So I'm going to turn up the heat, give this a stir, lid on and simmer the soup for about 20 minutes until it's all cooked through. So the soup has been simmering away for about 15 minutes and is smelling really good. So next I'm going to add my cooked vegetables. Now these can be any cooked vegetables you may have left. I've got some boiled cauliflower in here because that's what I had. You could add broccoli, you could add cooked carrots, you could add some kale, for example. Cooked vegetables can go into the soup now, but they probably only need five minutes maximum to warm through. Otherwise, I think the flavours really do not taste quite as good. So we just want a short period of time to warm them through and then the soup's ready to serve. Here we have the finished soup. Now this has the cauliflower in, but you could use any vegetable that you have that needs using up. You can see how steamy and hot it is. I'm going to serve it as it is, but if you wanted to blend it, then by all means do, and it will also be really nice. But it's sometimes good to have some soup options that don't need that. And here you go, delicious lentil and vegetable soup.